Hello and welcome back to Swift Goose. Today we're going to look at struct in Swift, specifically creation, instantiation, adding properties and functions, mutating functions, extending structs, and structs as value types. Let's start by defining a cheese coin structure using the struct keyword. And we'll give it a couple different properties. Let ticker equal cheese coin. So we'll give ticker a value right away. But now let's declare some variables that we can set later on. So var USD price will be of type double. And var exchange list will be of type string array. Now that we have our struct blueprint for cheese coin, we can start instantiating cheese coin variables. So let's say var cheese coin is of type cheese coin. Now let's instantiate it cheese coin equals cheese coin and here we put open and close parentheses now you notice if we do this we'll get an error saying missing arguments for parameters USD price and exchange list and call so when we instantiate our cheese coin struct these two variables need to be initialized you'll also notice that we don't have an init method here inside of our cheese coin struct they're not actually required because we can do our variable initialization within these parentheses we can add them manually, or we can click on this button here, and Xcode will do it for us. So for our USD double price, we'll put 3.33. And for our exchange list, we'll make it an array. Our first exchange, it will be available on Cheese Hub. And it will also be available on Ghost Hub. At this point, we have our cheese coin struct initialized, and we can print it off to see what's inside. We'll print cheese coin. And here we see we have a cheese coin structure denoted by these parentheses symbols. If we want to go back and add an additional property, we can do that up here. Circulating supply will be of type double. And again, we'll get an error here because we're not initializing it. So we can click the button here. Xcode will fill it out for us and we'll put an initial circulating supply of 10,000 cheese coins. Now, if we run our code again, you'll see we have our new circulating supply property. Let's create another new struct, but this time we'll use the init method to initialize all of our properties inside of our struct when it's being instantiated. We'll copy our template code from above, or change our name to Lotus Coin, change our ticker symbol to be BLC, and now let's add our init method. So we'll say USD price will be of type double. Exchange list is of type string array. And then circulating supply will be of type double. And to refer to each of our properties, we'll need to use the self keyword. So type self dot, and here we see our different properties available. Price equals USD price. The USD price on the right matches this parameter USD price. And the same will be true for the other properties that we put in here. Self.exchange list equals exchange list self.circulating supply equals circulating supply. Our error message has gone away and now we can use our struct. So let's create a Lotus coin variable, var blc equals Lotus coin. And now when we put our open parentheses, you see we have the initialized method here that has given us all of our parameters. So our double price will be 38,000. Our exchange list will be card kingdom and our circulating supply will be 1,000. Again, let's print out our new struct. Now let's add a function to our Lotus Coin struct that allows us to add a new exchange that Lotus Coin will be listed on. So below our initializer, we'll type in func add exchange, put an underscore here, exchange string, and add exchange list dot append exchange. 
Now you'll see we got an error. Cannot use mutating member on immutable value. Self is immutable. So in Swift, when we initialize a struct, it can be assigned as a var or a constant like we did here for BLC and for Cheesecoin. Just like the individual properties on our struct can be assigned as let for constant and var for variable. If you wanted to change an individual property that's set as var, you can do that using the dot accessor method. So in this case, you would call blc.usd price equals $3.50, let's say. But if you want to use a function to change these properties, by default, Swift won't let you because you'll see that we have this error here. So we need to make our function mutating so that Swift will allow us to change our properties. So let's add a mutating keyword in front of our func, and then the error goes away. Just to further clarify what we're talking about here, let's make a couple new Lotus coin structures, but one we'll use with the let keyword. So we can say let lot equals, we'll copy our values here, change this to 5,000 just so we know the difference. And if we try to call our lot.addExchange method here, before we even get to type anything, we see an error. Cannot use mutating member on immutable value. Lot is a let constant. Our struct is declared as a constant, so nothing can be changed, even though we have our mutating function here. Lot overall is a constant, even though the exchange list within the struct is a variable, we still cannot change it because lot, the struct itself, is a constant and cannot be changed. If we do the same function call for our BLC, change this to BLC in the beginning, we'll see that it turns green, meaning that we can run this. Essentially, Swift doesn't know if our struct is going to be used as a constant or a variable. So it assumes that it will be used as a constant, which is why you need to use the mutating keyword with functions that are going to try to change variable properties within a struct. So let's get rid of line 34 to get rid of this error message and then run our code again. And actually, before we do that, we have to put in a proper exchange value here. So we'll add card hub. Run the code. And you see now we have card hub has been added to our BLC. We can add functions to our structs using the extension keyword outside of the struct, but you cannot add properties here, only functions. So let's add a new function to our cheese coin struct using the extension keyword cheese coin. So here we put the name of the struct that we're trying to extend. And here we can add our new function func burn coin and we'll take an amount and make this of type double self dot circulating supply minus equals amount and again we're going to get an error here because we don't have mutating so let's put our mutating keyword back in and we'll comment out our print statement here called cheese coin dot burn coins and let's burn 500 coins. Print out cheese coin again. And you see that we've burned 500 coins using this burn coins method. Finally, let's look at how structures are value types, meaning that each variable you assign to a structure contains its own copy of the structure. So if you change properties on one instance variable of a structure, it will not affect the other instance variables. To demonstrate this, let's first comment out our code here where we burn the coins, and we'll set a new variable, cheese coin clone, equal to cheese coin. Now let's put a print statement to print out the circulating supply for both of our cheese coins. Cheese coin dot circulating supply, cheese coin clone dot circulating supply copy this. What we'll do first is cheesecoin.burncoins300 and then we'll put our print statement again and then this time we'll cheesecoinclone.burncoins and we'll burn 9999.0 and then put one more print statement. Let's run the code. 
Our first print statement shows that both of our cheese coin variables have 10,000 cheese coins in circulating supply. On our original cheese coin, after we burn this 300 coins, we're left with 9,700, but it does not affect the circulating supply of our cheese coin clone, and that's because structures are value types. Each instantiated structure of our cheese coin contains its own copy of the properties from the original structure template that we defined above. And then again in line 54, when we burn 99,999 of our cheese coin clone circulating supply, we're only left with one, but it does not affect our original cheese coin. That's it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it and learned something new. Please hit the like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and remember to hit the dinner bell.